Well, you know, in Belgium, it's almost as big as the chocolate. I'm talking about Fortis Group. It's a big banking insurance concern. Just think a European version of AIG, uh, the same kind of uh, company that the government had to rescue. What those folks in that capital are talking about now in terms of a uh, very big national rescue for sick financial institutions. Here now a shot of the Fortis Group in Amsterdam and juxtaposing between these two crucial buildings. Uh, the concern was that Fortis was running out of money and running out of time. It fired yesterday its chief executive. Now, normally you're saying, Neil, what are you telling us about this Belgian concern? Why should we care? It does have its tentacles in the U.S., and it does have financial interest in the U.S., and a lot of our institutions, including Lehman Brothers, remember that firm, had interest in them. Now, make a long and very convoluted story short. Things are okay at Fortis. Uh, the stock is down a great deal. It lost 21% on Friday. It's down 70 plus percent from its highs. Uh, but regulators are looking at it to make sure nothing worse happens. But Ron Paul, the uh, former presidential candidate, Texas congressman, had been saying this is the kind of stuff you worry about when uh, financial problems and hiccups become global, which is kind of what they're dealing with and wrestling with in Congress as we speak. What do you make of this, Congressman? Well, I think it's getting a lot closer to the concerns I've expressed. We, we have a lot of banking concerns, and we're all worrying about that, but I think that misses the whole point. I think the real problems we face are international because we've had an international pseudo standard as Bretton Woods II where the dollar was the reserve currency, so everybody's involved because everybody has dollars, and they've inflated it uh, against our dollar. So it is going to be worldwide. I believe this bubble is bigger than anything we've ever faced before, and we're concentrating on a very narrow aspect of the stock market. I think we're over concentrating on that and forgetting about the real bubble because we're doing everything we can to ex expand the dollar bubble because all we're doing here is expanding uh, uh, the the do dollars that we're here and, and the reserves. I mean, this, this last month, uh, the uh, monetary base went up 10% in one month. All so right. Well, well Congressman, you're, you're, like you, crazy. you are a <laughs> genius with this stuff. Uh, most people, including myself, are not nearly as smart. So let's step back and get a sense of this. You have in that same building uh, everyone and his uncle, it seems, trying to cobble together a rescue package that could cost conservatively 700 billion bucks, maybe a trillion. You have Chuck Schumer getting in a hissy fit with people in a room because they say they're not, they're not getting anything done and they're shouting and yelling at each other. It's a mess, Congressman. What does this mean? Is. It means it's unmanageable and they're into it deep and there is no easy solution or they've come up with it, but they have to admit the truth. They can't pretend they can patch this together by just, uh, you know, printing more money and expanding credit. We've done over $700 billion already. They want another $700 billion. So it's unmanageable. You cannot place value into assets that are, are worthless and uh, they, they're illiquid because they're worthless and they're trying to pretend that they're going to put value back into it and uh, by doing this they're they're doing exactly what they shouldn't be doing they're doing what created the problem and that is in other words more spending begets more the problems that that just Absolutely. cycles on so so they've got this arbitrary deadline congressman of trying to get this done i guess by tomorrow night uh if they don't i know you said it, it doesn't matter a bad deal is 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 yeah. Is, is better than, you know, is worse than no deal. So you're saying they don't get it, best case scenario, they don't get it, right? No, then, and that's then, right. What happens? What happens? It, it would be better for us long term on the short run because they have built so much pressure and enthusiasm and excitement over this that when it goes down, the markets are going to be very unhappy, but I think it's artificial. And I think the downturn immediately will be artificial, even though the long term, the downturn is going to be worse because the dollar problem gets worse. I got so, you. Uh, but I, I suspect for those reasons that you point out that uh, we will pass something tomorrow, settle the markets for a day or two. And then we'll be back to looking at economic statistics, which aren't very good. Very, and you said whatever we pass would be a mistake anyway, longer term, right? That's it. The long term gotcha. is what we should look at, the, do the dollar problem, because it's a world phenomenon, and now we're starting to see other countries uh, in involved, and we're going to see a lot more of those yet to come. Indeed. We're going to keep a close eye on this Florida situation, but as always, Congressman, you did warn about a lot of this stuff, uh, so my hat's off to you. Uh, thank you very much, Congressman. Thank you. All right. Uh, as the Congressman said, Wall Street will be open for business Monday morning, so deal or no deal out of Washington. Here to play both scenarios, Jenna Lee at the Fox Business Network. What do you think, Jenna?
Uh, what about the markets, Neil? That's potentially a trillion-dollar question you're asking me. But it's interesting, echoing what Ron Paul said. A lot of the investors I talk to say, you know, whatever happens with the markets on Monday is purely going to be an emotional reaction, and that they are hoping to steer clear of that reaction as it happens. So again, not reading too much into the stock market. And essentially, when we go back to this rescue plan, investors are also telling me that listen, this plan is not to save the stock market, and it's not really to save any specific company. This lifeboat is not big enough for. Everybody, and that's where Wachovia comes in, Neil, because that's another story we're watching at Fox Business, of course. Uh, the Wall Street Journal reporting this weekend that uh, Wachovia may potentially be up for sale uh, with names like Citigroup or Wells Fargo, even a bank out of Spain potentially interested in stepping in and buying this bank. Uh, the stock got hit really hard on Friday, got hit after hours as well, as everyone was focusing on what was happening in Washington and what happened with Washington Mutual uh, being the biggest bank failure in our history of this country. So that is still speculation. I want to make that really clear, Neil, at this point. The facts are that we have seen 13 banks fail so far this year. The biggest, as I mentioned, was Washington Mutual on Friday. Uh, Wachovia, though, Neil, is another big American institution. It's been around for more than 100 years. It has about 15 million households that it serves. So again, we're watching this story very closely. But again, this plan that's sitting up in Washington right now, a lifeboat that's supposed to restill uh, kind of market activity and market function, the law of the jungle, if you will, but it's not there to save everybody. And that's that's what investors are telling me. All right, uh, Jenna, thank you very much. This if this were a dictatorship, it'd be a heck of a lot easier, <laughs> just so long as I'm the dictator. <laughs>